Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Uh, we are here, very good friend, uh, director, actor, writer, Eli Roth. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I know it's a rare occasion. It's a rare occasion um, for a guest on the show. There's very few, and most of them are hated. Well, they- I'm a listener to the pod, so yeah. I hate when you have guests because <laughs> I tune in to listen to you rant. So I know how people feel hearing my voice. Yeah. And I'll just say this, don't kill sharks. Thanks, Tim. No, but here's why I wanted to have you on. Very rarely do I want to talk to someone about something. It's true. I spend a lot of time alone. I drive my car alone. I swim in the ocean alone. I stare at people. I go up and down PCH. It's actually, I don't mind solitude. And I gather my thoughts. Then I come here and, and I say them. Very rarely do I want to speak to anyone about anything and hear or, you know, if I want to talk to someone, I'll just play something they've said on YouTube. And then when I'm done with it, I can just exit out instead of having an actual conversation. But you, outside of the work we've done together, because we did just do a film together, which we will not speak about because we are in a strike. In solidarity with the strike, yes. Which will end soon, we hope. We hope, and we can get on and talk about all that stuff because I have a lot to share, but we will not. Yes, do that now. later on, months from now, when the strike is over and everyone is happy. And the executives and the writers are hand in hand. We're well, having lunch with Zaslav later. So if between that and your dinner with Reed I, I and your, may, you know, the breakfast with Bob Backish, I think you should be able to solve this. I may be the secret weapon, meaning like, and I've said this before, why am I not on a negotiating committee? I understand the way the executives live, where they eat, what they enjoy, what they value, and the writers don't, because the writers live in Echo Park and Silver Lake. And they're, they're just, it's a different breed of human, if you want to call them that. And I respect and love them, and I know that they need uh, their needs met. But they need to find a way to communicate that to the denizens of Beverly Hills of Malibu, people that I know and that I see and that I respect and I like. So we need to meet in the middle. But one thing, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is that Somewhere along the line, and I don't know when, your Instagram got completely hijacked. I thought you had been, <laughs> I thought your Instagram had been uh, uh, hacked. Hacked, yeah. I thought it was hacked. By environmentalists. I didn't know what was going on because I know you as a director of films and an actor. And I'm like, okay. And you would ask me, you, I auditioned for a thing you did a bunch of times. I didn't get it. That's okay. It's by God, it's not a big deal. I did, I think, 40 auditions. It's all right. It's fine. And I think it was like, I think you were like, we hired someone who's even fatter. And I was like, God damn it. All right. I don't know but, if I use those words. But well, it, by I, the way, it did serve as the audition for the new one. You know, I basically was like, okay, he can do it. And that's good. Yeah. And I, I, didn't, that, ma- I didn't make you re-audition. I wrote something for you for point. the new one. That's a good point. So I knew that from the first audition, I was like, oh, he's great. And he can nail it. It just, we needed a different type for that role. I like that. And this was like, I'm going to write something great for you. And, well, yes. again, we well, won't talk about it. We but, can't yeah. talk about it. That's why I didn't. Yeah. But... Then I'm looking at your Instagram, and I'm I'm just seeing bloody sharks, bloody fish. I'm seeing the entrails of fish. I'm seeing sharks that are opened up, and and you're you're having this uh, moment where it's all about sharks. And I and and what's interesting about this is people have breakdowns in a myriad of ways, right? Mm-hmm. In Hollywood, like people have all of these cra- like there's all kinds of ways to lose it, right? Lizzo was making people eat uh, bananas out of vaginas in Amsterdam. People just, they get to a certain point, they go, I, and, and listen, nobody's above a break, nobody. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, is everything okay? Can you communicate to me why at some point in your life you decided to care about vicious killing machines that inhabit our oceans? Well, thank you for that lovely introduction, Tim. <laughs> I, I agree. I mean, you could say it's a mental breakdown. But I also have a somewhat manic personality and obsessive, which I think helps being a director. Yes. I think you, I'm like you, I'm totally alone. I like to be in solitude. I like to write what I want people to say and then control the actions of what they do and then edit it. It's, it's part of what I enjoy in storytelling. But I think I, I also love sharks. I grew up in Massachusetts. I will say this, and, and you're a swimmer and an, and an ocean person. I'd never seen a shark in the ocean before. Have you? I have not seen a shark in the ocean. So everything we knew about sharks came from TV and movies because we had never encountered one in the ocean because why would you want to? Because a shark, as far as I was concerned, was just going to eat me. So then I heard I, someone asked me to be part of Shark Week with the show Shark After Dark, and they started saying, well, you know, we're killing 100 million a year. I'm like, how's that possible? They go, yeah, we, we are. It's for soup in China. And I go, really? That doesn't make sense. 
And I started talking to more activists going, is this thing real? And they go, yes, yeah, since 2000, it's a recent phenomenon. They serve it at weddings. And uh, the shark trade has started. And then they stopped. They said, well, you can't take the fins because that's cruel to throw them back in. So they started the shark liver oil started. And, and all these kind of side businesses started. And I go, well, what does shark taste like? They go, well, you can't really eat it. It's too toxic. I go, what does shark fin soup taste like? They go, it's nothing. It's like fishing line. It's fingernail. They have to flavor it with chicken stock. I'm like, wait, hang on a second. Why do we need sharks? Like, what's the big deal? And they go, well, sharks are what keep the ocean healthy. They're like the doctors of the sea. Like, if you think you have a swimming pool, like, imagine if you didn't have the filter and all the scum started building up on the top layer and there was nothing to clean it. Like, that's what sharks function are. So I went. Is this true? Yeah. Because I've never once heard, and I'm not saying you're lying, and I'm not saying these people are lying, and I maybe you could look this up. Are sharks the doctors of the ocean? Yes, they are. The, I'll tell you why. They are the oldest predators. They're 400 million years old. Without, I know everyone's already tuning out, so I'll try and make it fun and short. 400 million years old. They're older than trees, older than dinosaurs. They've evolved to basically be a perfect hunter where they'll only kill what they can catch. And they, they don't eat a lot. They'll eat once a month, and they eat the sick and dying fish. So what sharks do is they keep everything in balance, and they clean up the ocean. So This what, is interesting. What, it says here, as well as keeping the ocean food web in balance, sharks also play a pivotal role in keeping populations that they prey on genetically healthy, as well as removing disease and sickness from the ocean, hence the term doctors. I've never heard this. Well, that's there's a reason. Yeah. And there, there's a reason you're afraid of them. There's a reason you hate them. It's because the fishing industry is making millions and millions and millions of dollars off of their death. But they also they also attack people. 12 people a year. More, they, pe more people are killed by vending machines. Is that true, Eli? Yes, it is. This is one of these fake statistics. It's not a fake statistic. I How do you die from a vending machine? Because your Zagnut bar gets, stu gets stuck, and you pound the damn thing going, give me my candy bar, and the thing falls on you. Like 38 or 40 people a year die from vending machines. More people are killed from armed three-year-olds. Oh, my God, at least 37 deaths and 113 injuries since 1978 that have resulted... Oh, but that's since 1978. That's not per year. That's what go. they're aware of. A lot of people aren't bragging about, well... It says the Larry. yearly risk in the U.S. of dying from a shark bite is roughly 1 in 250 million. In contrast, the yearly risk of dying from a vending machine accident is roughly 1 in 112 million. Okay, so this is the party line. These are the talking points. All right, so it's, so, so it's basically... <laughs> so you you're pre came in prepared with this. Well, I, I know this stuff from doing the research. So I spent five years making a documentary called Finn that is on... It aired I during mean, Shark Week. Okay. It's, it was on Discovery+. Plus. Then that sold to your friend David Zaslav. So now it is on Stream on Max. It's well, on no one Max. cares more about sharks than him. Right, exactly. Well, the thing is, nobody likes sharks because... They don't have faces. They don't have personalities. They don't have vocal cords. It's not like when you say right. save the and elements. And by the way, creepy. And here's the thing. This is the way I feel about sharks. I don't have a particular issue with them. But when, when people say, like, we have to live in balance with nature, okay, but, I mean, let's, I mean, let's take that to the extreme. Are we not going to use uh, bug spray? Are we not going to try to limit... Uh, the incursions of rodents and things like that into our homes. I do think that at the end of the day, we should be looking at sharks. You know, when we have these seal populations that are out of control, they're nuts in where you come from. There's a there's a documentary right now called uh, After the Bite. Yes. And it's incredibly boring and a waste of everyone's time. But I watch it so you don't have to. What it's about is all these people from Massachusetts with heinous accents. Uh, the water, it's the worst. Yeah, but I grew up with it. But what it is, is the seal populations have gone nuts. Mm -hmm. The sharks are feeding on the seals. There are more sharks now than ever. Mm -hmm. And it's created a really dangerous situation for people that want to enjoy the water. And it's become like the tough guy thing on the internet to go, hey, you're living with the sharks. You're in their home you better be, uh, you know, aware of that. You're taking a risk. And my thing is, like, we need, I think, to really not let sharks intimidate us, and we need to see them as a threat and counter that threat the same way we would counter a threat of China or a, a country, you know? We are building up an arsenal right now to fight China. In our defense department, we have trillions of dollars of money being spent on weapon systems to eventually counter China. 
should we not look at sharks uh, the same way? Should we not experiment with fences at beaches, electric fences? Sharks are there. They they don't want anything to do with us. They you know, don't. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're just they're there anyways. They don't want any. They don't want any more act, interaction with you than you want with them. What you should be afraid of is the algae. The acidic algae blooms. Look at the this beaches. This is interesting. This is this summer. I am also afraid of this. Look at look of if, if you want to worry about sharks closing a beach, okay, you can have shark spotters. They have in South America. Someone looks and they go, "Up, oh, there's a shark." People come out. They go but back that's in only five minutes. If the fin is up, no, they can. You can. I mean, you can see them. You can. They can have drones. What about they can have get the video up of that person in Egypt being mauled? I want you to defend this. Eli. I'm not going to defend. I it. want wait, Eli let's, Roth wait, to defend. Hang okay. on a second. Okay, let's talk about the algae. Yes. Look up in Ventura County this summer. The beaches that were closed because of acidic algae blooms. Dolphins were biting. Dolphins were washing up on shore. Seals are washing up on shore. Last week, all the beaches in L.A. were closed because of bacteria. This is this is when they say the ocean is out of balance. What the sharks do, and this eat is... Eat algae? No, but they eat the fish. They, eat. They, they keep the grouper in check. The grouper eat the parrotfish. The parrotfish eat the algae. So there's no sharks, right? And then you have the grouper go crazy because they're like, well, the police aren't around. Let's eat all the parrotfish. So there's no parrotfish now. So the algae are like, well, hey, we're great because the grouper don't eat the algae. They've taken out the parrotfish. The parrot. So now the algae spreads and it turns toxic. So... Animal life can't live, but but it's it's impossible to clean. You can't fix that. Is that there is no way that human beings, with our vast array of resources and technology and science, can fight the algae without sharks? No, not yet. I mean, what, you're talking about dumping chemicals in the ocean. The natural way to do it is sharks, right? But we're pulling them out of the water for nothing. It, what's the problem? That but isn't this mainly the Chinese? It's not. That's the myth. <laughs> it's that we're selling our fins. Everyone in the world does it. We just stopped. There's like a fin ban, but it's legal to kill sharks. So that's why this thing started the Alabama Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo, which I was going to make a post about. I kept quiet. And then I saw what they did over the weekend. Two years ago, they allowed sharks. So what they did is these scientists. The Alabama. Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo. It's the biggest kind of fishing bloodbath in the United States. It's a rodeo where thousands of boats go on a crazy fishing. It's trade. a show of strength. It's a show. And two years ago. <laughs> From humanity. They showed, they, they put, they added, one guy who's a bear hunter added great hammerheads, bull sharks, tiger sharks, and people were so upset because you had these beautiful, magnificent apex predators. The hammerheads really don't attack people, so I say leave them alone. The bulls, none of them attack people. They, they, it's an investigation. It's an investigative bite. When you bite a sandwich, are you attacking it? Yes. Are you going, do yes. I, okay, but yes, what I if am. it's a sandwich you don't know if you're going to like? That's true. You take a bite and you're like, but the mm. sa if, even but, if I'm but, biting a sandwich that I don't know if I'm going to like, the sandwich is let's say damaged. You, let's say you go to Jada and you bite a sandwich yeah. and you're like, I don't know if I want this, this, the turkey and the Munster cheese, maybe I have the roast chicken. You take a bite, and then you're eh, I don't like it. I put it back. But, but you're, you're not attacking it. Sharks attacked five people over in the beginning of the summer in Long they Island. They bit, yeah. They bit people. Yeah. Now those people are fine. They were not fatal bites. Yeah. It's an investigation. Yeah. I mean, how many, does, how many people die from fentanyl? I mean, like, there are a lot of things. More people die from bees. More people die from dogs. It's not fun. Yes, but you're not crusading on behalf of fentanyl. N not yet. Right. <laughs> not yet. I, I mean, might. In not, my, my next iteration. Yeah, you're, uh, so this, this does, and here's where I will throw you a bone. This seems a little fucked up. Well, what they did this year was not only. But the, make the a guy, shark is tasty. No, but what, ha not, have you measured it for mercury? It's 35 times the allowable amount of mercury in your body. So you have like Shark Girl Madison. There's Project Nakawe. They, they, well, they'll test it. Well, I don't like it. these this Ocean Ramsey. This, I have a major problem. Uh, with. I know you do. But I ocean, have a major I know, issue with Ocean Ramsey. I know Ramsey. you don't like Ocean. And I don't. Well, no, I don't like the trolling of the. First of all, is it not disrespectful if we're going to respect the doctors of the sea to read to jump in and redirect them and tap their nose? And if I did that to my doctor in Beverly Hills, he'd be upset if I'm like go that way and I just touched his nose. So I, know. I don't know what Ocean Ramsey is doing. She seems a bit sick. Well, there. Look, Ocean is big on education, and is Ocean that her is, real name? That is her real name. Oh and God! Husband. And Ocean's been great with me, and I think that Ocean's main thing of is education. Of course, you'll defend her and all of but these by environmentalists. The way, look, there are other people that feel. But people are like, "Why are you touching sharks at all?" They're, That's correct. There, there are plenty of people that feel that, that is way. correct. I will completely acknowledge that. But the point is that in this rodeo, you had a guy who killed a thousand-pound tiger shark. Brett Rutledge. Look him up. He's the winner. He won. He won six thousand dollars, paid for by iHeartRadio. So he takes this apex predator, they slice it open, and 25 babies come out. The fishermen, so Deep Sea Guardians get all these videos there. And then the fishermen send a video to Deep Sea Guardians where they've taken the 25 dead babies 
and the mother, and they did a TikTok to the song Baby Shark. And that's where I was like, you know what? I mean, I understand Do that we kids, have that. It's, it's on my Instagram. Yeah. And that was sent by the fisherman. So I just said, so you basically have this rodeo. They- I will say this. I love um, Raycon earbuds because they're like the other one, but they're better and they're less expensive. And you have a 30-day happiness guarantee you really can't lose. There are so many modes. You talk, you know, you have 32-hour battery life. And the modes, you have awareness mode. So basically, you can be aware of things while you're listening to whatever you're listening to, music, podcasts, and you could stay safe. And it's the most important thing I have in my life, the Raycon earbuds, earbuds. Um, and most people I know, it's the most important thing they have in their life, and it's the most important thing they'll ever have. I'm in a safe house right now um, talking about them. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Buy now. Tim Dillon Show listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tim. That's buyraycon.com slash Tim. You get 15% off your order. I mean, what, do you deserve that? No, but you're getting it because I'm telling them, you know what I mean? Like, you, you because you know me, you're getting it. But you don't deserve it. You should pay full price for Raycon because it changes your life. And... They're giving it to you for 15% off. Good night now. And and they get the scientists. That seems too far. But they get the scientists from Mississippi State University on my Instagram. Uh, it's like Mississippi State, uh, Southern Alabama University. And then the Deep Sea Fishing Rodeo puts out press going, look, science is there. Now, NOAA, which is the body that's supposed to be overseeing all this stuff, Janet Coit, at the head of NOAA Fisheries, says shark fishing is sustainable. My, my whole point is we can't eat them. It's too toxic to eat. They're not down 90%. We're killing at least 100 million a year. And I show this all in the documentary. It could be as high as 270 million, 30,000 an hour. Sharks take 11 years to reach sexual maturity. They have like eight or nine pups. Like they, they breed basically like humans. So they've killed this apex predator, cut out 25 babies, made a TikTok with it, took the prize money from iHeartRadio. And, and all these scientists are like, shut up. It's for science. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm saying we have to completely end shark fishing because now the beaches are closed because the algae is spreading. It's a real problem. And everyone is looking at the activists going, you guys are crazy. So what I've learned, and you want to know why I go crazy? This is it. A lot of the, the science labs, they get their money from the fishing industry. They're funded by them. So they don't want to speak out against it. And the NGOs too. The fishing industry is but such I a powerful lobby. So I'm a film director. The fishing industry I can go crazy. is a powerful asset to have in terms of conservation. One of the things that RFK did was when RFK, whose career was as an environmentalist for a very long time, people don't realize that. Um, he went and he got, you know, the 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 fishermen and the hunters. He didn't go out and use words that were politically divisive like global warming. He went out and said Let's get the hunters. Let's get the fishermen. Don't you want clean rivers? Yes. Don't you want, uh, you know, forests that are healthy and thriving? Yes. Okay, well, here's how to do that. And he, you know, so I think the fishing industry can play a vital role in conservation. Are we against all fishing? Are you saying Absolutely that not. all fishing is bad? No, I am not. That's exa- I completely agree it's with you. It's an extremist point of view. <laughs> it's a very to extreme- say that no one should have any fish. fish. Two-thirds of so the world eats shark fish. shark is bad. What else are you looking to ban? Just shark. That's it. Just shark. That's it. Um, uh, like Honestly, the, the sharks, you can't do anything with it. Anytime a shark is out of the water, well, someone's making money. Well, have you ever money. seen when they, they do a- The like jaw. A, well, no, no. Well, that's nice. Yeah. But also, have you ever seen like on a restaurant when they do? Uh, it's not quite taxidermy, but I forget how they do it. Where they take the shark and they, you know, they make it into a uh, something you put into on a, a wall mount. Yeah, put you it can, on a wall. Here's the thing: so much of the sharks are killed by bycatch, anyways. They're all getting caught in the gill nets and the fishing. There's, and I do think so. They're that, not even pretty to look at. They're not. Yeah, they're all ground up. They have no fins on them. I mean, look, y- you can't. It's a pointless industry, and the reason people want to keep going is because they want likes on Facebook. So I'm the one who's like, I don't make my money from the fishing industry. I can just be a voice and go, why are we doing this? That's all I'm saying. The whole point of the doc is, can't we just, we, we 50 years ago, the whole world got together and goes, why are we killing whales? We need to stop. Sharks will not be well, able to recover. Whales never attack. It's, it's Except Moby Dick. Right. But whales never attack, and and killer whales really don't attack people. Except, did you read in the heart of the sea? 
where the bull sperm whale rammed that boat three times. That's what inspired Moby Dick. Be that was yeah. that was the first sign of intelligence. That book is incredible because people thought whales are mindless monsters, and the fact that it stopped and turned around and rammed Captain Pollard's boat twice, and then it happened to him again. The guy got shipwrecked twice. The book is insane. The people were starting to I'm eat just, his cousins. When when we exempt sharks from criticism for their behavior, yes. When we say that it's not their fault that they killed somebody. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that, you know, we're calling them predators or apex predators. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, like, we should view them potentially as a threat. And they should, when they attack us, shouldn't they be punished? Well, I think that if you, if you get attacked by a shark, then your chances are probably better to win the lottery or get struck by lightning. I mean, yeah, shark, the, the sharks, 12 people. Here's, and, here's yeah. the thing, Tim. You, you are getting your wish right now. Yeah. What you wish for will happen to a shark is happening 30,000 times per hour. You, I'm not, if you want sharks to be punished, but I'm it's not, happening. I'm not doing – well, but here's the thing. If, if, the, if, if we take away all punishment, what happens – you're telling me, you're saying you don't think if sharks could, they would come on land and kill everyone. They wouldn't. They don't want to kill anyone. They're, they would, Eli, I've been if, in they the figure, if they wanted to go on land, they would kill everyone. They – are you telling me that you think sharks are like cuddly people who are like? I've been in the water with them, and I have cuddled with sharks before. When what a sand shark, a nurse shark? No. And what water? A tiger you, shark. What water? In Tahiti. You go and first, I I held. It's me holding shark in tonic. That was a gray reef shark. That was in the Bahamas. There was a shark who had a hook in its mouth that they had taken out that would follow me. Finally, in in French Polynesia, I went in the water. I just, with no chain mail, with nothing. And they said, just put on flippers. Be careful. Don't splash. And they threw chum around me. And I had like 100 lemon sharks around me. And I just sat still. And they didn't care. They're bumping into nothing. Is this a sexual nothing. thing? People going in the water with these sharks? It's What <laughs> no, is going on I here? wanted to know if they were going to bite me. And they didn't. And then I went under the water with a tiger shark for an hour. And it was really cautious and really aware. And, you know, there was someone with tuna fish behind me. And I, I fed them by hand. And this thing didn't go crazy. It just carefully... Glid by, and, I, and then I was in the water with great whites. You have to get in a cage with whites by law in Guadalupe. And I saw a seal swimming around, hanging on the back of a shark's fin. And I was like, but, and, they, and they don't go after, if they see us, and when you approach a tiger shark or hammerhead, you have to, underwater, you have to be very still, hold your breath. They get scared of bubbles. They, they just like, are you a predator? Are you a prey? You're a large thing with arms. I don't know what that is. I have to be very cautious. They take an hour before they come over to you. So by the time they get to you, you have, very, you have to breathe calm because you have very little air left because you only have an hour, 75 minutes of air underwater. So I couldn't believe it. I, basically everything I learned about sharks was a lie from the media. And the reason they're doing it is because they want people to be totally turned a blind eye so they can keep killing them, so they can keep money. You know, so then why would Spielberg make Jaws if it's a lie? Except, well, he regrets it. He apologized for it. Is that what he said? And Peter Benchley, too. Peter, it's one Peter, of the he, greatest movies ever. He said he's very sorry about the damage it caused to sharks. I don't blame Jaws. I think it's the I think it's the weddings. I think that the, the industry started. But I, I do think that Peter Benchley... Well, Jaws was a very big component. It was. Of fear. Of fear. It was. And, by and the way, maybe justifiable fear. Do you know that... Because... It, but do you know that was people, created? You like, there was that guy that got eaten in Massachusetts. There was a guy that was eaten people in Egypt... Can, and we're supposed to ignore this. Tim, people get eaten on land. I'm not saying ignore it. I'm saying they are dangerous animals. Like, let's not pretend that there's cute, cuddly creatures. Look at that. Make that big. If you know how Make to go in the water. Make yeah. This, I mean, this it's is. It's horrible. And this is the a tiger poor guy. shark. This is your friend. It's, it's not necessarily it, mine. This is your friend. These are the people that you defend all day, these sharks. I can defend them because they don't have vocal cords. Somebody needs to defend them. I'm not defending this poor guy If they did have vocal cords, killed. you know what they would say? Horribly racist things. <laughs> They would say anti-Semitic things. There's no look at his face. That's me. That's me with a little shark. Is that really true? That's me right there yeah, on yeah. the right. The and New that's York the Times left. is writing about this. <laughs> look, I can't get one review of my special, Jason no, Cinnamon. Way, no, by the and, way, no, and they trashed it. Gets it. millions of views no. on Netflix, and 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 they were writing an article about him and a shark. They trashed me. They were like, oh, oh, did they? Oh my God! They were like, the New York Times. I don't even think they watched the movie. They were like. Eli Roth, torture porn, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Nah, nah, nah. It's like, I was like, they completely missed the point of it. Okay. I got well, eight okay. reviews. Well, that's fine. So, yeah. So, if you're very happy, you want to see me get trashed, read the New York Times review. It's like they didn't even watch the movie or listen to anything I said. Interesting. But that's all right. I mean, I, I don't... This well, you is, know what it is? You're a horror director. You're known for that. Course. And they think that you're just kind of exploiting gore. And that's okay. But you, I wasn't prepared for how much you knew about this. You're very well versed on this. 
Well, I have to be. I spent yeah. five years making the documentary, and there's a lot of people that put their trust in me. So, and there's a lot of people that are much smarter. They're but you know, look, trust me. You 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 talk to the biologists that are Dr. Sean Powers, Dr. Marcus Dryman, who were the two scientists the who endorsed core, the Alabama. As Coulter they once will, said, the core of environmentalism is a hatred of humanity. If I speak to those scientists, they will want to destroy all life on Earth to protect animals. Well, they they will. And I'm not they will that. tell you that I'm crazy. I'm an extremist. Shark populations are fine. If you oh ask, oh they, wait a minute. If you ask Janet, oh so Coy they don't they don't agree with you, the scientists. No, they think we're crazy. Write their names down. No, no, because they, I do. Re I've always respected science. But look, go, I'm telling you, <laughs> go on there. They put up Noah put up a whole Instagram defending shark tournaments, not even acknowledging the 25 because babies. they're bought and paid for. Exactly. Well, they're they're Department of Commerce. Noah is under the Department of Commerce. So they're bought and paid for, and you are hated by the fishermen. Yes. Well, I'm I'm not anti fisherman I'm just saying, fish whatever you want. Just leave the sharks alone. That's all I'm saying. It does seem weird, but but don't. Are you ever concerned about and too much too many sharks? Do you not have that fear at all? Are no. you? You don't think they're? I've been I've been in the one spot in the water, the Shark Super Highway in Fakarava in Tahiti. The yeah. only other person that was out there was James Cameron in a boat. Yeah, and it's just like you go and you do a drift dive. When with people don't sharks, shoot deer, and I have a home in Texas where mm -hmm. I live, and it's my where I was raised, and I love, and it's my home, and I love being there. And we banned the hunting of the deer. Mm. Well, do you know what happens now? You're hunted by the deer. There's lots of deer. Mm -hmm. Is there not everywhere. something to be said for balance? Yeah, but balance right now, it's going to take like about 25 years of not killing sharks to get it even close to rebounding the if population. If we stop uh, fishing the sharks and shark bites go up to 100 a year and fatalities go up, is that okay with you? Well, yeah. So your position is more dead people, less dead sharks. Well, of course, but I don't believe that's going to happen. I think that what's going to happen is with more sharks in the water, the oceans are going to be healthier. They've shown that reefs, when you put sharks in balance, the like oceans, the wolves. oceans, I believe, are fine. The re well, if you've been underwater if, with them and seeing the, the dying is, reefs, we also not. have pools. Right, but you would you? What Should if we sharks said, be in pools? What if we said ban your pool filter, and you let all like? Well, my my house manager, <laughs> my pool got a very big algae bloom because my house manager did not tend to it, and she was potentially, I don't know, eating. Right. And I had to have them come in, and they put a bunch of chemicals in, and within 48 hours, it's fine. Right. So why are we not dumping chemicals in the ocean to kill algae? We are dumping chemicals in the ocean, make no mistake about it. It just has nothing to do with algae. Interesting. Yeah. Like, think about the ocean as your pool, and think about that house manager as a shark. If the sharks are, do you know what I mean? If you had a better house manager that was more of a shark and less of, a, a, what would do a walrus? I don't know a seal. That would be nice. You said it. Sorry, just saying. Eli said Roth it. said it. All right, sorry, I didn't I'm say it. I'm not getting I'm sued. I'm sorry. I, I don't know your house manager. I'm, sorry. I'm not getting sued. I'm if you had less of a like more of a shark, less of a seal. I guess you can say seal. Yeah, safe. I was disappointed with her behavior, but you know, I didn't bite her. I'm just saying this. There is a reflexive position that most people have right now. It's this reactionary position where. They're always defending sharks, and they're always looking to, um, you know, attack human beings. And it's like, well, you were in the ocean. It's your fault. Well, I think that's wrong. I think you that can have wrong. one without the other. I, I think that's crazy. I mean, I'm not trying to. Listen, I understand that the fishermen in Alabama are being told, this is great. You have the scientists in Noah going, there's no problem. Go fish them. Everything's sustainable. So... When you're told that by a, it's like the Milgram experiments when the yeah. person says you can shock, which we I recreated for Discovery and we saw like when someone says, "Oh, they told me to do it." When the scientists are there and they condone it, people believe the scientists because why wouldn't you? They're reputable scientists. They're not like shady. They're, of course, these are top scientists that are going. Populations are fine. I don't know where their money's coming from. That's a question. Yeah. But the problem is people go crazy. Next thing you know, they're ripping babies out of pregnant That's tiger sharks and making TikToks. But they're doing it because they're like, it's for science, guys. And they're like, ha ha. They hung a bull shark from the American flag. Now, if you're a veteran, is that what you want? Like endangered sharks hanging from a flag in Alabama and everyone going, woohoo. Like something's wrong. That's not okay. So when I see the environmentalists going like, why are we doing that? They're, you can't eat it. You, there's, it's completely useless. So what are they? What, what are they and now we're going to get the algae. Once they get them, they throw them out. They all got thrown out. And in fact, in New York, they have the Block Island. There's there's shark fishing tournaments. There were two of them. I think it was Block Island, Star Island fishing. They're now finding 
all the carcasses of the the juvenile ones because you have to throw back the underweight ones. So all like the kid sharks that they didn't bring in, that they didn't report, are all just rotting in the bottom of the ocean. The whole thing is, it's like, and then we criticize China, but we're the ones killing sharks at home. Why can't we clean up our own backyard? Can we all have fulfilled lives without killing sharks? That's all I'm asking. Is this one thing that we can all do? And it's not going to come from me. It's got to come from the kids of the fishermen. Someone in Mississippi, someone in Alabama has to go, you know what, Dad? Can you just not kill sharks? I know you love fishing, but we can't eat them. And you just throw them back. And all you're doing is making TikToks with them. You're making TikToks with dead sharks. That's the only reason you're pulling them out of the water or getting prize money. Can you just not do that? Is that possible? Can we have fulfilled lives without dead sharks? Well, you know, I, I, I certainly think that's an idea. And I see this bull shark here. Um, that was hung from the American flag. And I, I do understand what you're saying, but I also understand that that public safety is important when people are swimming in the ocean. And we have to, you know, realize that. Sharks are coming closer to the beaches now. They're swimming in. They've always been there. Well, but but is it, you know, this is, I think, an increasing... Uh, danger to people and that people have to be very aware of these animals and they have to be very aware of, you know, uh, the, the potential for them to be violent and deadly. And, like, there is this thing where... But that's like saying we shouldn't go in the woods because there's bears. vicious... I'm against those. People... <laughs> like, people fetishize vicious animals and they think they're cute and cuddly. This happens all the time. There was that... Uh, documentary about that guy that hung out with bears yeah. and then guess what Grizzly happened? Grizzly man. He got eaten right. by a bear. They, they got eaten by a bear. Okay. Now your friend uh, Ocean Ranch Stressing, whatever her name is, Ocean Ramsey, <laughs> eventually, statistically, she's going to get ripped to shreds by one of these tiger sharks on YouTube Reels or Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. I don't want it to happen. I'm saying what she's doing is incredibly dangerous and she's trolling a, 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 an apex predator. So... To me, I just think that they should be viewed as predators. They, you said when a shark comes into contact with humans, they go predator or prey. Mm -hmm. I think is is it wrong that humans look at sharks as predators or prey? If that's how they size up us, is it wrong that that's how we are sizing up them? We are not on either of their food chain. They're not on our food chain, and we're not on their menu. They just, they don't know. Like, they take a bite and they don't, we're like too bony and fleshy. Like, when you see a tiny little bird or a sparrow, you're not like, oh, let me take a bite. It's like, mm, right. maybe it was a big roast but Americans chicken. are getting fatter. They are. Americans are now resembling marine life. It's true. In <laughs> At a, an alarming in a, rate. In, a, in an alarming rate. Many Americans are indistinguishable from sea lions in the water. This is very true. This is a fact. Sharks will stop seeing Americans as bony and fleshy and start seeing them as what they are, kind of large marine animals that will provide sustenance for a shark. But the idea, okay, so let's say you win and we now eliminate all sharks. I don't want to eliminate all sharks. I've suggested electric fences. I've suggested poisoning some, the ones that are bad. <laughs> I've suggested clubbing seals because the seals on the beach are the reason that we have more sharks now. You talk about algae blooms? The reason that we have more sharks is because we have more seals. You used to be able to club a seal on the beach. They banned right. that. They got rid of seal clubbing. You used to be able to go, and you would go, boom, you're done. You wouldn't always kill it, but you would just go, boom. And then they would know, oh, this isn't fun. And then they would leave. And then the shark, because we have more seals now than ever. And in Massachusetts, they're saying this. And these shark conservation freaks come out and go, don't worry about it. It's okay. And they have to remind them, they go, the job of, of this is public safety. It's not to protect sharks, it's to protect people. We have a constitution. Now, when you, when you were able to remove the seals, but now you can't remove the seals, you can't touch the seals, you can't make the seals uncomfortable. So then sharks eat the seals, it makes it unsafe for everybody. The beach is getting closed all the time. And you have to understand that the parents who lost their child in the water in Massachusetts who was surfing, have a right to be angry at the sharks. So many people are running online businesses right now, but they really don't know what to do. And here's what, because it's the back office, and people are like, but how are people going to get what I ship to them? And 
how am I going to ship things to them without losing my mind? And what you do is you use ShipStation because it is one service that allows you to interface with all the major shipping carriers, USPS, FedEx, the po- all this stuff. And what you basically do is you are using ShipStation as a way to, you know, like automate all of your shipping tasks so that you can keep track of who gets what. So you can devote all of your energy to the origination of new business, being creative, marketing, you know, generating leads, doing all that stuff. You know, you don't need to be worrying about, did the Johnson family get the package we shipped? No, that's not your job. Your job is to make the magic. Let ShipStation handle the back office. You need to make the magic. And everyone has magic inside of them. And very few people get to it because they're always concerned with shipping. This is why most people fail in the world because they're like, how do I ship it? Where will it go? Well, I'll tell you, ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code Tim Dillon today. Sign up for your free 60-day trial. ShipStation.com, Tim Dillon, your free 60-day trial, meaning that for 60 days, which is two months, you do not pay anything. You remember House of Cards, where he would go, Claire, Claire, Francis, Claire. Um, that show was about politics and about um, hacking. And, and at the end, one of the guys hacked into the NSA and because they wanted the election to be won by uh, Frank and Claire Underwood. So what I'm telling you right now is you should use ExpressVPN because it prevents hackers from stealing your data and governments from spying on you and private uh, data mining operations from taking your data and selling it to people. ExpressVPN scrambles your IP address so it's like you're anywhere. And this allows you to basically, you know, be protected on the internet. You got to protect yourself. Uh, Claire, it was a great show and they should have let him finish it even though season five has a pretty fine ending. ExpressVPN. Uh, dot com slash Tim Dillon. That's E X P R E S S V P N dot com slash Tim Dillon for three months free with a one year package. Three months free with a one year package. That's insane. That's a quarter of the year free with a one year package. ExpressVPN dot com slash Tim Dillon. You want to protect yourself while you're on the internet. You do not want these people coming after you, taking your stuff. You know, it's not fair and it's not right. So many things are wrong. This is one of those things that can be right. You can right the wrongs and have the justice. Go to expressvpn.com slash Tim Dillon for justice. Of course. I mean, that's, I'm not inhuman. If I had a child that got eaten by a shark, of course I'd be upset. You can't bl- You can't say, well, it's your fault. And I, I do agree with you that you can't say do these sharks are friendly. Do sharks have a god? I think... <laughs> Do they have a god? <laughs> they do, do sharks have a god? Do you know? Do you know that in Hawaii, the spirit of your ancestor goes into a shark? That's why they. Have I'm a for little. Sharks. I've had enough of them. By the way, I've had enough of, of Hawaiians. Spiritual. I know everyone's spiritual over there, and then you go over there. Everyone's 600 pounds and on meth. What happened to the spirituality? By the way, you leave so the resort. Saying, okay. You leave the Four Seasons in Maui. The spirituality goes out the window because there's a gun in your mouth, and they're taking your luggage. Okay. So I've had enough of all that. The, how about more rain dances and less gun in the mouth? So, but that person dies and their spirit goes <laughs> into true. a shark. So wouldn't you want that person who put the gun in your mouth I've had to of, be inside a shark? Yeah, I've had enough Should of this get, idea that like Hawaii is some great spiritual place and it's just <laughs> tourists getting knives to their throats. Um, Listen, I understand what you're saying, but you have to understand what I'm saying. If I own a house in Southampton or Malibu or Palm Beach... I should be able to float in the water without thinking of should I've paid enough money to, so that these sharks should know this guy should not be touched. And in fairness, I haven't had a problem in those three places. And I've been in the water a lot. That's what I'm saying is that none of us, you know, 99.9% of us will never have a shark encounter. We're not supposed to. But I think we need, you need to have healthy respect for them. But I think that we need to protect sharks. Who would win a shark versus a polar bear? Oh, that's a good, probably a shark. Interesting. Yeah. Sharks are ambush predators. Right. You know, you, you wouldn't even know the shark is going to get you. You'd be floating, and then you're either going to live or you're not. 
They move, you know, just, they'll take off like a rocket and just bite you. But this is what I'm saying. It's just, it, it's weird to me. Like, why do we see, when we see people that live with very, uh, you know, they adopt these animals, right? You see a guy living with a, a, a tiger, you go, yeah. that guy's nuts. Mm -hmm. But when we see these people going into the water and touching sharks or giving sharks cute nicknames, mm -hmm. Does this not raise, a, is this not a red flag? To me, it's a symptom that it's just a reaction to what has been presented out there before. Right. If everyone had just been like, sharks are important, we need them, leave them alone, stay out of the way, don't swim at night, don't swim, like these are the times when sharks are feeding, we have people can spot them from drones going, okay, there's a shark here, you guys watch out. Like, if we had a healthy respect for them, the way that a lot of the surfing community does, um, then I think we wouldn't have to have such. You know, extreme Jonah Hill used the videos. words "surfing community." Jonah Hill used those words, <laughs> "surfing community." They were disgusting then, and they're disgusting now. Those two words, to me, are vile, uh, because there are surfers. I think with many different views, but I get it. I get it. Respect the oceans. Respect the sharks. Blah 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 blah. Um, it, we may get to a point where pools are the new oceans. It might happen. It might get to that point where literally... Whether we like it or not. Here's the thing. Whatever we say in this room, yeah. people are going to keep killing sharks because as long as you're making money from doing it... Well, I don't make do a it. dollar from it. We, we don't. N nor do I. Nor do I get any money from this. But that's why, you know, FedEx is still shipping sharks. GNC is still selling shark products. But people can go to their... Hey, what, are they good for you? What about the shark oil? What does that do? Terrible. <laughs> we tested it in a lab in the documentary. Actually, what does it do for you? Nothing. It causes inflammation. It was started by a guy who wrote a book called Sharks Don't Get Cancer, which is a lie. Sharks do get cancer. And then two weeks later, he started a shark cartilage pill thing because he's like, well, they're killing all the fins and taking the oil anyways. So it's Can you a, it's get an image, science. Google image, shark fin soup? Because let, let's see, because you... I try it. I try it in the, mo in the movie. I ate it. And it's not good. And they have a gelatin version that's identical. And I went to China. What about I, New England clam chowder? It's amazing. Love, dude, I love clam chowder. So are you going to go on a crusade next to protect the clams? No, I'm okay. not going to save the clams. I will, I will eat well, clams. Well, what about tuna? That are Don't you think tuna are going, hey, man, because uh, the vegans are going to say, well, Eli Roth seems to really love sharks. And maybe it's because they're stars. Sharks are stars. Yeah. So they get a lot of attention. So if you make a documentary about tuna, no one cares. But you I would. I heard some things about tuna. You, While I was making this, someone yeah. told me that there's a certain corporation that is trying to kill every tuna in the ocean and freeze it and stockpile it so they can own it. They and can that's own tuna. Happening. They can own tuna. Big they tuna. Kill, you'll have to literally get it from this but my, corporation. But have you ever gotten the criticism from vegans that you're not going far enough? All the time. All the time. I, it, when you're going and what to is your this, response to that? Why yeah. pick sharks? Why not salmon? Why not tuna? What about octopus? I was at Avra the other night in Beverly Hills, and the manager there who treated me very nicely, and I will be returning. Although I was trying to eat healthy, and they sent me 19 desserts for free. That wasn't great, but I do like the restaurant. They sent me free, uh, 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 you know, on the house, they sent me an octopus, uh, like a mm -hmm. appetizer. Yeah. And don't they have a movie where it's... My octopus friend. Right. And isn't that some freak that's friends with an octopus? Once you see it, it's like it's too it's too upsetting. Because like I had a pet pig, I can't I, eat pork anymore. Once you know, I, Eli, it, you know, first of all, <laughs> you can you can eat bacon, you can eat pork. It's phenomenal. Um, the reality of the situation is most of America. I'm sorry, not America. I mean, not most of America. Most of the a lot of the world is starving. It may not be most, but a lot of them are starving. It's true. And a lot of them would eat anything they could get. I know. And this idea that we are sitting at the top of the food chain in this incredibly privileged country lecturing people like the Chinese a lot of them have to eat dogs that's what it is they're poor and you know what they're eating dogs and I've always supported their right to do that even when people are get mad at me because people are are poor and if I was in a poor city in America and someone was eating a dog I would not yell at them if I was in I don't want to say a city name, but let's just say uh, yep. Levittown, Long Island. <laughs> and a family was eating a dog because that's all they had. I'd go, hey, I get like, don't you see that to people around the world, it seems so privileged to sit on this perch and be high and mighty and say, oh, this guy has the luxury of worrying about fish. Like, for example, when you go in, on the safari in Africa, mm -hmm. um, you know, there there are people that get offended by, uh, you know, the hunting there, the, you know, what sure. happens. But a lot of people will tell you that game hunting actually supports the environment. Yes. Because it actually allows investment in areas that badly need it. It promotes uh, the, the uh, 
a necessity to have the species propagated so it doesn't go extinct. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those animals are going into villages and eating people. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny to me when it's like somebody like you or Ocean Ramsey on your yachts in the ocean and you're having little, you're having little tea parties with the sharks because you're the elites, but then there's other people that are getting eaten by sharks. And I'm worried about those people. Well, I was I was very careful about that, Tim. And that's one of the reasons that over the course of the movie, I go to everyone in the country with sort of no agenda. I don't lecture anyone. I go out with the shark fishermen and I try to understand why they're doing it, how they're doing it, how they can feed. Because what I've seen is that in the Bahamas, one shark dead is basically sells for about $30. One shark alive can bring in $250,000 in shark tourism and dive tourism. So there's oh, actually there's actually a gold mine. So, so there's actually so more money in keeping the sharks alive. Much more money. Well, and I so, like this. So, so I worked with a woman named Reggie Domingo. We go to the fishermen, and there's there's two beaches, one called Cabo Puma, one called Los Frailes. And in Los and Frailes, where is this? In Mexico, in Baja, California. So. You're always out of the country. Oh well, I go. Isn't around, that odd? A little odd. <laughs> Isn't that odd? You're little. constantly uh, like On out the lamb. of the country. But look, I sat down. We with, have beaches here in America where you grew up. How about you visit them? I did, <laughs> and I went to the shark tournament in Massachusetts in Newburyport. It's crazy. So I talk to everybody, and I don't come in. I don't. I know how they see me. I know they're going to see me as privileged. And there's some Hollywood director. I was like, let me just yeah. go and just turn the camera on and let them say their side of the story because I think that you can't tell people what to do. I think you can only lay out the facts and go. Is, the, is there a better solution than this? Can we just stop doing this? What would, what would the benefits be? And the, the answer really is you look at Shark Girl Madison, she's helping in Indonesia, the dive tourism, help the fishermen. We should be helping the fishermen turn their businesses into dive tourism because we have literally two beaches side by side. One has tourism, they're all thriving, and one is killing sharks and it's, everything's dying. So my feeling was like, I know I'm gonna be mocked. I know everyone's gonna go at me. I sat down with the shark traders in China They'd never gone on camera before. And I was like, I just need to understand. And they're like, and the guy said the same thing to me. He goes, do you know what we eat in China? Do you know where all the pig's feet go? They go to China. We eat everything. People are, and I listened and I, it's People on camera. People are starving and, and I, I made and that I hear point them. and it's a great point. And I go, I understand yeah, that guys. It's, but a, it's a salient point that. We're going to be out of sharks in 10 years anyways. If we don't stop now, they're not going to be able to repopulate. I'm just saying that I think we in the Western world, in the first world, um, have a, a privilege mm -hmm. and we don't realize that food is really to many people around the world a luxury mm -hmm. and like if you're a, a young person that is not hungry i'm sorry that is hungry and you're in one of these countries and you're lo like you're working hard at school all day and you're waiting for that bowl of shark fin soup when you get home and you go i work hard all day at school and then you're driving a rickshaw literal rickshaw through the mountains with your panda friend and you're going up hills and up and down the hills and then you get to this lovely little rustic little Chinese kind of like bamboo. It's very, it's kind of well appointed and you and your panda friend get out and mom goes, hey, and here's the shark fin soup. That's someone's culture. So to me, what you're suggesting is like, Someone goes, oh, I have a culture, but it doesn't matter because you want them, instead of that, to go through McDonald's, get 15 cheeseburgers, and, like, you know, like, start, like, I don't know, vaping by the mall. But they're like, no, 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 no. We have a culture, too, and it's eating this soup. I asked them about that. It actually started in the 1960s. There was a story that one of the emperors in the year 800 said, I want to eat a shark because that's the strongest animal, and I want to be stronger than that. So then in the 1960s, the restaurants, the hotels were like, well, what if we served it as a gimmick and just to get people to stay here and have their weddings here? And then in 2000, China really started getting money. Or 90s took off. It became a really expensive item. But the problem with the soup is that nobody likes it because it tastes like nothing. It's actually fishing wire. So they have to put chicken stock and pork stock and they have to scrub it with bleach. Now, the bleach they scrub it with is the same stuff you clean your toilet with. It has neurotoxins. The bleach does not come out. They have to scrub it, bleach it, dehydrate it, rehydrate it. 
and, and it, it only just feels like if you bit your fingernail, that's exactly what it tastes like. So in fairness, so so I am describing eighty five percent of American fast food exactly as well. There's so, a lot. There's plastic in the yoga mats at Subway. I know, I'm well, sorry. In the there's food. yoga mat plastic in, <laughs> in the, the in the bread at Subway. I don't know who do, have do yoga do Subway mats. yoga. Yeah. The yoga I mats. Do all of my yoga, the yoga <laughs> at Subway. You and but you know what I mean. Like like you're you're what, making good points, but then they will turn around and they will go. You're serving people plastic. They can. They can say it. But here's the thing. The young generation in China, I, I asked them, I go, what? What? They don't want it at their wedding. It's the parents are doing it to show off. And well, I said, that, what? you know, to I go, be honest said, with you, I don't listen to the younger generation because they don't believe in tradition. They don't believe in values. They're, many of them have been raised on the Internet. They're sick. And if you're going to have a shark fin soup, a traditional shark fin soup at the wedding, and, you know... You're, if you're having sh food that has actually no flavor and causes impotence and brain damage, which it does with the neurotoxins in the fin, and, and to even get it to taste like anything, you have to flavor it with either but chicken, stuck, or it's pork. But it's a delicacy, it's and it is a flex. <laughs> it's it's a flex, but they but what we realized, Feeny like Baby Drop. fake there. It's not 50 but grand, dummies. But we realized it's fake. if you have an expensive bowl of mushroom soup or lobster soup people are just as happy and we talked to so the young people in china are over this are over it and the older people are just like well, we just want to show off give something expensive and treat our guests well so a lot of Should people we destroy every tradition that's ever existed on the planet like this, well, this is, is my, a, this yeah. is a fake tradition it's, it's it was a marketing gimmick it was never a tradition it's not like oh by the way the faroe islands you know they killed have you ever had a good argument have you ever sat down with one of these fishermen and have they really opened your mind you know, when you sit down with a fisherman, like a yeah, a, a, a hearty kind of old salt from Massachusetts, who's like, you know, or the sharks must be eaten. Yeah, but Eli. Well, well, really though, has any has anybody opened your mind to the necessity of this? Is there? Do you no. see any of the arguments from the other side at all? The only thing I can see is that in a place like Indonesia, uh, they're starving and eating shark because there's a lack of protein. That's that's a serious issue because Indonesia. But what I've seen mainly is that it's like the mafia is very involved in Spain. There's, they're huge. They, Spain is the number one exporter of fins. It's a completely useless trade. There's not a single person where I sat down. I was like, I, and that's why you see me in the documentary talking, and I go crazy. I'm like, but I don't understand it. Like the soup has no flavor. It caught, it has neurotoxins. None of the health stuff. Like what is it? And then it's like, oh, everyone's just making money from killing them. So why stop it? That's really the answer. Well, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it's it, it's certainly you have an opinion, and I think that it's valid, and I think you've done research into it. Um, and I think that, like, there's is there not a happy medium? Oh, can we not meet in the middle? What is the middle, though? The middle would be viewing sharks as violent predators. Yes. Protecting ourselves against them. By means of... Well, I don't know, but... But you've been in the water your whole life. You've never even seen one. A sand shark once swam into me and was disgusted. Don't you think that's racist? Against her. Isn't that the definition of racism? No, it's is a, you've it's, heard things about it. You have actually no experience whatsoever with sharks. None. Everything is from what someone has told you and what you've read in the news. You've never experienced one. You've been in the water your whole life, and yet you still believe this. That's how strong the media is. Don't you see the brainwashing that's been the last 40 years? That's what the fishing industry wants. They like us to be terrified and angry and petrified of them instead of saying, going, we need them, respect them, protect them, but let's figure I'm, out a way I'm like only, in South I'm only, Africa. I'm only sometimes on a plane if I have nothing to do and I have the uh, Wi-Fi, I will watch shark attacks like a lot of people. And... Because, shark attack three or I'll with, watch plane crashes, which is actually kind right. of ironic and fun to do in a plane. But I'll watch shark attacks because I want to know what's going on and I want to know what I'm up against. And this idea that sharks, Eli, are not violent when they are apex predators is crazy. But that's not my position. My position is please don't kill them. We, we need them. Okay, but also how about please don't kill us? Two sharks. Well, there's a lot of other things you want that to start with. That guy in Egypt, why is a tiger shark eating him? I, I don't know. We You'd don't have to know ask why the tiger shark, but the tiger sharks, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. People are going to die. Like, we can't protect, we can't childproof the world. We can't, you know. What about a gate? No, I'm literally saying, what about a fence? They've tried. People have tried it. It doesn't and work. Why? Because you can't build it in the ocean. The ocean moves. You can't, like, build something that sits in the ocean that keeps sharks out. What Do you we need? have drones that watch the sharks? Yeah. 
That's and can we send threatening things down? Like not, no, not, just, not you just, we just, there's a horn. They do shark spotters. They just, there's a shark. People move out five minutes later. Shark passes. Most of the time, the sharks are there swimming with us. And that's it, really, and we never know it because they don't want, they're afraid of interaction. I'm telling you, they only go after things they know they're going to eat. And they don't eat that often. They're pelagic. They wander the globe eating the sick and dying fish. That's what they want. And so when we're splashing around, that's mimicking the, like when a fish is injured, it splashes. Well, I don't like splashing. I don't do it a lot anyway because it's very, it's kind of like low rent behavior in the right. ocean. Well, you, you know, kinda, when you, you have to float kind of like, you know, uh, you know, like you just kind of like just be quiet. I don't like a lot of splashing. I don't like a lot of loud music on the beach. I don't like a lot of fast food, you know, like a certain type of beach. I like a couple of women in white linens, very quiet. Women don't go in the ocean. It's a little gross. And the men will go in with the children or the, the housekeeper will bring the children in, but the women sit there, a little white linen on the beach, reading a novel. I, so there's certain type of beaches that I don't go to. I mean, and God forbid, and God help us, we know a lot of what's going on in the beaches right now is, is crazy. Um, but I'm just saying, you know, I've always been a person who believes that human beings are a special and unique thing. I know that about you. No, I believe well, that. Would you, and, well, and would, I, would you ban smoking? I mean, you're an advocate of smoking. Well, not always, but I think there's times when a cigarette will make uh, a situation more livable. Um, uh, but no, I, 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 I wouldn't ban smoking. What I would say to people is, you know, I believe human beings are special and unique. And I believe they have dominion over the animals and the beasts. A lot of people do. And I, and I don't even believe that necessarily in a theological Christian way. I believe in it in a we are smarter than them. Mm. We are sharper. Mm. And we have been able to do things like make things like drive throughs and nuclear weapons and uh, all-inclusive resorts and things that people may not like, but they're nice. Did you know that great white sharks speak with mouth gaping? They do this little, like, these little jaw movements and move their fins. And w is that speaking? That's how they communicate. And what you'll, do they say? Well, well, they, well, they go down in the bottom. They, they decide who's going to go up to breach. They have an order. They discuss it amongst themselves. You'll never see two sharks breach on a seal. Now, can you speak in mouth gaping and fin movements? No, but a lot of the people I grew up with can. Well, so there and you go. And a lot go. of those people decide through mouth gaping and fin movements who's going to talk to what girl and who's going to get right? in what car. Exactly. So there's a lot of human beings that behave in a certain way. I'm just saying, I, I, here's what I say. And this is maybe the, 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 the resolution. Let's all just lighten up. Right. I because agree. you're making these very depressing things about, Oh, there's all the killing and the shark. Let's lighten up the Spanish mafia. Let's, let's, let's all have some wine and relax. Let's not go here and tell everyone how to live. That's my only problem. I go, Let's not. Am I out there killing a shark with a knife? No, but I'm very much. Let's live and let live. Let's let people around the world do the things they want. And if it's your culture to have the shark fin soup at the wedding, I don't know if it's my job as a Western American to tell you how to live. I believe that we all share a planet. But the sharks are pelagic. They roam the globe. So they're taking your sharks out of your way as much as you, it's like it's it's a problem that affects all of us. I don't want to tell anyone how to live. I know no one's going to listen to me. But when I see them making the TikToks with the 25 dead babies in my gut, I have that's to say tasteless. something. That's And they're hanging it from an American flag. That's tasteless. That's what I said. I was like, what are we doing? No, that's wrong. And then iHeartRadio's paying for it. Kill These them two quietly. universities are endorsing. And well, iHeartRadio have my issues with too. And they're celebrating it. And so how can I not say something? It's, about, it's just like- I, uh, Listen, I agree with you in that case. What's your, that's your favorite animal as a shark, pretty much. Let's be honest, it is. Well, I love dogs too, but yeah, sharks. What's your second favorite? Well, sharks and dogs. Sharks and dogs. Yeah. Is that the next documentary? The people uh, eating dogs in China? Oh, no. The next documentary is going to be something far more sick that I can't even talk about because that's another... Before we let you show. go, am I the greatest actor that's ever lived? Well, I can't speak in specifics, but I will say you are a brilliant actor. I'm, and I and I'd say... And I, I think say this I'm better than Leo or Clooney, and if I did the roles they did, the movies would be better because it would be less about sex. Enough with the <laughs> sex all the time. It, because people can't focus on the movie. Everybody's just sexual. I mean, we're not promoting something specific. Why we're, is Timothy promoting... Chalamet and everything when I can also do it for a, <laughs> a fraction of the cost? I think if you change your name to Timothy Dillon, Dillon May or something. But it's just he's all the time. He's befuddled and confused. <laughs> Let me in. 
and I'm more direct, and it hits a little harder. Can I tell you something? In my opinion, if I was to call me by your name, you know how homophobic people would be. <laughs> right. You should be Willy Wonka. That would be the well, Tim I mean, Dillon I've, is Willy I've Wonka. Just, this whole Willy Wonka with the kids, out of control. the kids just getting He's stuck. Like if you, by the way, re remade let Willy the Wonka sharks story. on that set and eat them all. I mean, that's just you. Do, it, it's sad for me to see a lot of these franchises, things I grew up with, being destroyed. Uh, for whatever reason, or you know, reinvented in ways that I I can't uh, co-sign and and uh, but I, I do appreciate you coming on. I do appreciate this. I I know that you've swayed me a little bit here, where I do understand now where you're coming from with the algae. The algae's bad. Look up Google algae bloom Ventura County. No, Look that's up not. LA well, beaches. I don't care about Ventura County, but I do <laughs> but like. The but this it's close summer, to Malibu. But these beaches were closed this summer because they're like, like out of control. Acidic I don't algae like that. Bloom. I don't like that, and I do. And that's because we're killing all the sharks, and they can kill them in Alabama, and it's going to affect the sharks in California. Like the, the sharks move around; they don't just sit in one state. So that's what I'm saying: is like, can we just, as a practice, is there a way to make them live on land? Like, is there any way that they could live on land? I looked into it. I used to. Want There's to have no way, clear. right? But no. could they? They. I mean, it's like it's like the dolphins. I mean, it's it's like the the orcas. You can't. You can. But part of the problem crazy. with them is that they're in the water all the time, and no one really. Like it's not you're not interact like if they were on land a little bit. We're not supposed to see them. They right. don't have faces. They don't have emotions. So people are like, the only time you see it is when there's a bite. You're right. 90, what are they gonna do? Why in the don't news? they have hey, faces? The shark, shark did nothing every day. Why don't day. they have faces? Well, they've evolved that way. They were here before. There are they are our last dinosaurs. I know there's some dinosaurs in the movie industry, but these are real dinosaurs. For real. And we're and wiping you think them out. They'll be here forever. They should. No, be. There, there were five mass extinctions. We're currently in the sixth. They will not survive this. Now, at the rate we're killing Christopher them, Christopher Hedges produce. keeps saying that. Chris Hedges, that we're in the sixth mass we extinction. Are. How do we. What does that mean? Well, we're killing everything, which we know. But like the bug, I mean, pick your cause. There are people that talk about the bugs, that the bugs are dying. There are people that. Oh, talk about, no. Eat here the bugs. we go. More bugs. But <laughs> that's great. But the sharks are, the sharks are not going to make it. We're killing them too fast, and there's too much against them. And at a certain point, but do you know how buggy it is when you go certain places? It's very buggy. So what are we doing? I don't know. Look, do we all want to live in the Brazilian Amazon? Do we all want to live in, in bug tents in the Brazilian Amazon? The I'm sorry about civilization. Are, I'm sorry about Western civilization. I'm sorry this Rousseauian, you know, third world thing we're all doing. I, I know it's kind of fun to do in Silver Lake with your hat, but the reality is civilization is actually a great accomplishment of humanity. It is. And animals have their own thing. But we got to figure out a way to kind of deal with but it, and they got to deal with us. Well, I think that any time you take a position defending something, you're thrown in the category of crazy extremist. Right. And all I'm saying is, can we all live happy and fulfilled lives without rewarding for killing sharks? And everyone says, well, it's just a few sharks in Alabama. But it sends the message to children that these are prizes, that this is fun, and that this is a whole culture of well, that, listen, killing I them do for fun. Agree so with I'm just you. saying, can we not do that? Fish for food. But well, the Gilgo Beach fun. guy didn't kill any sharks. Right. He didn't. But, you know. Again, Long Island for the win. He's not out there killing <laughs> sharks. He's not going to kill any more from jail. Where do probably. people want to, because everyone's going to agree with you when, because my fans are soft. So when they see this, they're going to, you, you, you've made a lot of sense and you've come in here with statistics and, and biology and all this crap. And people are going to say that I am throwing out kind of superstition and fear. But I think both of those things have a tremendous value. Um, but I make my living off of fear and superstition. <laughs> well, that's right. So that's I appreciate right. it, Tim. But isn't that I love weird? It. Isn't that a little? And that's a great point to come maybe end on. Is like, don't you think it's a little hypocritical that you make people afraid for a living? Like hostile. I'm afraid of Eastern Europe now right. for no reason. None. Eastern Europe's not like that, although it is a little. <laughs> but like this thing, when you made hostile, you're making a movie about people that are kidnapping and torturing and murdering people and it's a secret club of elites where they can visit this place and 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 kill a person it's all before anyone knew anything about epstein's island yeah well it's way. all before we all knew that was kind of we true. all knew it was real we so just had you're, an instinct you about made it. us scared of of these these commute these billionaires that wanted to cut people's eyes out but you were right but i was correct you were correct i was onto something so maybe these uh, peter benchley is right or maybe I'm correct with Finn that we got to, you know, now we got to do this for the sharks. But I also thought it was kind of perfect because if you if you're an environmentalist, you're going to get a certain crowd. But if I make horror movies, 
people will know maybe I'll give it a chance. Maybe I'll listen to what he has to say. Right. And they don't have to agree. Sharks are going to get killed no matter what we do. But at least I'm the cra- I'll be the crazy extremist that puts out the idea and maybe moves the, you know, the Overton window a little. So that when you hear it again next year, they're like, Did, wasn't Eli talking about this? It is stupid. This? I have a friend who does, like, think he's going to get eaten by a shark all the time. And I do want to say to this person, nothing special will ever happen to you. Nothing good or bad will ever happen to you, so don't worry about it. Like, my friend's like, well, there was a juvenile white shark in Manhattan Beach. I go, you will never make the news for anything. (laughs) Not for one thing. Nothing. No one will ever care about you at all. So tell people where they can see this documentary, where they can support your efforts. Thank you. I mean, Finn, it's on HBO Max or Discovery+. Plus. It's called Finn, and you can go on my Instagram page, or actually a great page is Shark Allies. It's a really good one. But I would say watch watch Finn on HBO Max and look at my Instagram and I tag everybody. And, and, and if, if you want my point of view, watch Guy in Egypt Eaten by Shark. <laughs> That's on YouTube. You can find it on TikTok. They keep banning it, but it keeps popping up. You can watch that. That's my argument in a nutshell. In a few minutes, a guy yelling, Daddy, as the sharks eat him. Uh, TimDillonComedy.com, American Royalty Tour on sale now. And let's hope we have a resolution here. Are you optimistic this is going to be resolved soon? I think everybody wants it resolved, and yes. I think all parties are. And I think that, you know, the Tim Dillonization of Hollywood needs to start um, very soon. And uh, well, I, the and, reality and I think is... that I, wanna, I really want to be able to come back here and talk about your work because I think you are, you know I think you are something well, special. Uh, and I, I yeah. can't wait for the world to go. Well, it's very nice of it. you. And I will say that in, in the reality, there are a lot of people hurting. It's been a tough time. Yeah. There's a lot of people. That all the are, dry cleaning businesses, all the side businesses, the restaurant. It's so painful. It's fucking tough, right? It's there's, there's restaurant workers that are, are saying, like, nobody's eating out. And nobody's doing lunches and stuff anymore. And it's like, it is an economy. It is fun to shit on. Uh, Hollywood because they, it's worth shitting on, but like there is an economy of people that you don't see that are really affected by this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and- it's not just the CEOs. We all feel bad for them because their names are being dragged through the mud, and so we all feel bad for Zaslav or Sarandos. Like uh, well, obviously, the first thought we have is like, are they okay? Yeah. And well, they, they can't. They can't even use their names at restaurants anymore. No, it's, it's tough. Like, it's hard. It, because they like, can. Well, they sorry, can. But full. the reality is, they can. All right. Um, they can. <laughs> And but that's our first thought. But then also, much further down the line, people that may not be as sympathetic, like restaurant workers or unemployed writers, still should get a little bit of our sympathy. I think, you know, I think a tiny bit of it should be reserved for people that are like, I've missed a mortgage payment. But still, the vast majority of it should be to people that are being yelled at during college commencement speeches. It is very embarrassing. I thought it was very funny if Zaslav had, again, just taken out a gun instead of shooting wildly into the crowd. I mean, it's just funny, but no one has any fun anymore. Eli Roth, support everything he does, save the sharks, blah, blah, blah. Um, We'll see everybody on Patreon.com. Thank you. Bye.